Hi, I'm Pierre. I'm a PhD student at KTH in Sweden. And today I'm going to present a work on a photonic MEMS phase shifter that was implemented on a silicon photonics foundry platform. All right, so a bit of a background motivation. Um, so there has been a drive towards programmable photonic integrated circuits in the recent years. So by programmable, um, we mean with an external uh, control, such as a computer, you could reprogram a chip into different functions so that they deform something like a different routing or different filters. Um, and the motivation has been mainly, of course, cost. Uh, similarly, as for FPGAs in electronics, um, the idea that if you have a chip that you can reconfigure, you don't have to go through multiple iterations of fabrication through a foundry of a dedicated chip, but you can do a lot of your prototyping with such a generic reprogrammable chip. Um, so those circuits are a bit different, uh, uh, like proposition on how to implement them but the general sketch here on the left. Um, so you have different interfaces, optical in-out, electrical for high-speed modulation, for instance. Um, and in the center, that's a core I guess, of, the, of those generic chips, will be a repetition of a basic tunable unit formed into such an hexagonal mesh, for instance. Uh, can also be non-hexagonal, but yeah. Um, and this basic tunable unit has to has control over both the power and phase. So uh, one way to implement that is two phase shifters and passive splitters. Um, so basically you can form a very large circuit that can perf can be then reprogrammed into the many different functions uh, with only phase shifters. However, that also means that you need a lot of phase shifters. Uh, and for that to scale, those phase shifters need to have good performance, such as low insertion loss, low power consumption, they have to be reconfigured very fast so that you can address our multiple devices. And uh, they should be quite compact. Um, and the manufacturing should also be compatible with a large scale fabrication. Um, so the kind of standard way to actuate such phase shifters now is to use thermal tuning, uh, thermal actuators, which has been shown to have good performance in terms of phase shift insertion loss and also rather compact. But um, the, the power consumption is quite high, you know, 10 milliwatts or more for a Pi and a single device. So that doesn't scale well at all. And um, the time response of the device is usually also kind of slow. So more than 10 microsecond. Um, finally, uh, last drawback for, for scaling is that there is a thermal crosstalk and you can't really have too many devices next to each other or you'll have a lot of noise in your circuit. Uh, however, and that's of course why it's already used now is that such actuators are already existing in standard foundries. Um, so manufacturing is rather scalable. Um, so on the other hand, uh, MEMS we, we see as an alternative option. So microelectromechanical systems, um, they also have good uh, optical performance um, in terms of phase shift and insertion loss, but uh, power consumption is much, much lower. Um, so in the microwatt range instead of milliwatt, um, and that's only in the actuation. So the steady state is a zero power consumption um, and can reach a faster speed, one order of magnitude or more. And um, there is no issue with crosstalks so that in theory, the devices, if made small enough, could be made, uh, could be densely integrated. However, the, of course, the fact of manufacturing has been very limited. So those devices have been shown on SOI wafers before, but never on a scale that enables such circuit. Yet. Um, so we'd like you now uh, to present our, our, our device that tries to fit, uh, fit such a need. Um, so it's a phase shifter. We presented the design itself last year at Cleo already. Um, now uh, we also show that, yeah, last year it was only made on the SOI wafer. Now we also have access to the different metal layers and doping. So we uh, it's now on the full foundry platform. Um, but basically, the device is composed of two parts. So optically, there's a waveguide that's anchored, but the main section is suspended here in the center with a narrow uh, silicon beam next to it. 
And this silicon beam is actually attached to this H H shaped shuttle that can be moved and uh, restored to the position of the springs. So when we apply a bias between those two uh, set of electrodes, we can pull away this silicon beam from the uh, fixed wave kite, which in turn changes the effective index. Um, and when integrated over this 50 micrometer of length, we get a phase shift. All right, so uh, we implemented it now on uh, IMAX IC50G, which is a, a silicon flooding platform in, in Europe, in Belgium. Um, and so, yeah, first a few advantages of that, of course, that we had access to all um, high standard PDK components, creating couplers, um, MMI splitters, low loss wave guides, different layers of metal connection with low resistance, and even doping up to the device layer of the movable actuator. Um, so for testing, we add a phase shifter inside a max sender interferometer. So just a few notes on the process flow. So we started, as I mentioned, with those chips from iMac um, that already have two metal layers, um, uh, plus one for bond pads and uh, doping in the silicon um, and already have as an access down to the device layer, but usually used for sensing. Um, so we added two main uh, post-processing steps. So first, uh, protection of this uh, exposed oxide uh, with the use of alumina, uh, so that the layer of stack is, so the back end of the line stack is not attached, attacked during the vapor HF release. Um, and yeah, so finally vapor HF release, so where we under uh, the, the silicon structure so that they are free to move when we apply a voltage or bias. So yeah, I'm now move a bit more to the measurements of characterization. So first in DC. So when we apply a bias on this phase shift inside the interferometer, and then we try to study the change in the transmission or using a tunable laser and a detector. So that's at a zero volt full spectrum that we have. Um, a bit limited by the noise floor at the bottom, but we could still clearly discern uh, all the different fringes thanks to the short FSR. When we zoom in at 1550, for instance, and we look at the tuning with voltage, you can see a change in the, in the, in the position of those peaks. So that when you add a phase shift in one arm of the interferometer, you can uh, yeah, shift the, the, the pattern. And looking at the exchange ratio as well, we extracted the phase shift and the insertion loss of the device. Um, so the phase shift at 1550 is quite high, more than 2 pi will be the target and the insertion loss lower than 0.4 dB. So that's uh, quite good values compared to other MEMS phase shifters, but also compared to uh, thermal uh, counterparts. So when looking at the full range of the, of, the, of the tunable laser, we also extract the major phase shift. So here uh, we have some dispersion, but we can see that more than 100 nanometer bandwidth with a pi or more phase shift and a 2 pi or more uh, band of more than 30 nanometers. In terms of insertion loss, um, so overall loss is quite low, but with two trends, so at, at shorter wavelength, we think that's many an artifact due to the noise flow of the tunable laser of the detection. But at longer wavelengths, uh, we do see um, an increased insertion loss, which we think is due at lower gaps because that's many present with lower actuation voltages or even passive state, um, that with low gap and higher amount of deconfinement, so for longer wavelengths, <coughs> sorry, um, we change the distribution of power at the edge of the waveguide sidewalls, and then the scattering changes and is more present for, for smaller gaps. Um, then we studied the device in uh, AC, so looking at the frequency response. So we substituted the DC supply with a lock-in amplifier. So that we used for the driving of the amps. So adding an AC component to the voltage supply and also at the input of the amplifier lock-in. So using the, the photodetector output um, and looking at the modulation in the signal. Um, so looking a bit at the mechanical sketch again. So now we add an AC component so that we oscillate and change the gap uh, next to the waveguide. 
um, this gap into a modulated phase shift and we get a modulated output uh, as a photodetector in DP. Um, so we normalize it here so that it's at zero corresponding to the low frequency value. But what you can see is that this output response is very flat up to a few hundred kilohertz up to the mechanical resonance uh, at 500 kilohertz and only achieves minus three dB attenuation at one megahertz. Um, so yeah, two things maybe to note here. So yes, this resonance is linked to the mechanical resonance phenomenon where we get close to the resonant frequency of the of this actuator or this oscillator, we get an increase in in, in amplitude, and uh, which translates in air output modulation. Um, so this was actually measured in air, and the fact that we still see this resonance in air suggests that there is low damping due to air, which I think is due to this in-plane motion and low device thickness. And second, so with this minus three dB bandwidth of one megahertz, which is more than one order of magnitude larger than thermal counterparts, which is uh, really nice as well. Um, just to confirm, so here we also plot the phase that we recall with the lock-in, um, and we show that yeah, it has the expected minus pi shift at the resonance um, from such resonators. So to conclude, uh, we show the photonic MEMS phase shifter. It was for the first time implemented on IMAX IC50G platform with access to PDK components and um, options for low resistance routing with different metal layers and doping. Uh, we show the device has good performance uh, on par with thermal counterparts uh, and even faster actuation reaching the microsecond scale. All right, so this work was funded by the European project Morphic. Uh, feel free to check the website. We have partners all across Europe um, and try to develop such large scale chips that with MEMS uh, with, that have low power and that can be reconfigured um, for as an optical FPGA. Thank you.